Hello and welcome. In this episode, we do a deep dive into what is going on in Aotearoa, New Zealand with the smoke-free regulations and the Regulated Tobacco Products Amendment. Since the Smoke-Free Environments and Regulated Tobacco Product Amendment was read in Parliament on the 26th of July, the heat has been on Minister Aisha Viral to not only address access to tobacco products, but also vape products, even though it is not part of this amendment. Parents are really concerned. Teachers and principals have already told you that, that that's just too accessible. Look, I, I, I agree that we are not, we do not have the right um, balance in our regulation at the moment. It is too accessible. And what I will, um, what I am doing, in addition to the changes we're making through the Smoke Free Book Bill, will be to seek advice on that. But there is a balance to strike. Uh, to strike here because we do want vapes to be available to support people to quit smoking. And we made the biggest progress we ever made in um, in supporting people to quit tobacco, which is the most deadly legally available substance uh, in the last couple of years. And that largely is down to, well, I'm told it's down to the availability of vapes to help adults to quit. So I agree, we totally need to strike a better balance than we have now. Fair go is undercover. Can you me? Hidden cameras, recording. With access to the media, the anti-nicotine zealots enabled yet another TV New Zealand expose to be aired on primetime on the alleged youth vaping epidemic. You reckon you might be able to buy some vapes in this town? Yep, probably. I'll give it a try and see. It is an epidemic amongst youth. This expose was filled with disinformation that was presented as fact. Their kids are going through a vape pod, 50 milligrams in two or three hours. That's the equivalent of a pack and a half of cigarettes. For example, the CEO of the Asthma and Respiratory Foundation stated that 25% of youth vape. It surveyed 19,000 school kids and found more than one in four had vaped in the past week. Of those, 80% were vaping at high doses. This figure is not quantified as it was from a casual survey by the Life Education Trust that did not specify if it was ever use or daily use. Furthermore, this survey had no peer review. The official ASH New Zealand survey has the daily use figure for youth at 3.1%. Hi, can I get a zesty lemon disposable? A zesty lemon disposable? Just, yeah, just one, thank you. Hasn't said a thing, she's just served her. However, one truth did come from this expose, that the youth access issues are around dairies operating as specialist vape shops. A must hold a mint, please. How many? Just one, please. Okay, $10. Dairies are flouting the law by opening up vape shops within their premises. When questioned, they said they are operating within the law as they had registered with the Vaping Regulatory Authority. We have questions, so many questions. The first questions are for the Vaping Regulatory Authority. Why are they issuing licenses to these places without the required inspections and verification per the legislation? And when will the education and enforcement sections of the regulations be implemented as they are written? Terrell is almost 16. He's been hooked for nearly two years. He started early. Yeah, 14. Which is not good. Third question is for the parents who allow their minor children to state on national television that they are addicted to nicotine and have been for years. Where in the hell is your parental duty of care for your child's well-being? It is your responsibility, not the government's. Statistics from the US alone that I've been reading this morning have linked thousands of hospitalised lung injury cases and dozens of deaths to vaping to date, but it's becoming more and more popular among our youth here in Aotearoa, which is quite concerning. The last question is for the media. When will you allow a balance between the two sides of the debate in your outlets to let the people make informed decisions? It's far less harmful than tobacco and I can tell you that indeed there is there are some harms from vaping but it is nowhere on a scale with tobacco. It's probably saved my life and if we're worth anything to the government then it's worth a step taking. We're, we're hitting 80% quit 
So, you know, that is, is massive. There's so much less harmful than uh, smoked cigarettes, uh, and they're an avenue for people to quit smoking. We agree that the concerns in Aotearoa, New Zealand around dairies as vape shops need to be addressed. It can and should be through this amendment without any further restrictions on vaping. This is how it can be done. The legislated amendments to limit the tobacco product retail outlets should allow for at least three outlets in each town or in bigger cities' neighborhoods a general retailer, a supermarket, and a petrol station to continue to sell tobacco for those who do not wish to stop smoking. And also allow these general retailers to be able to sell closed systems as an option for those who may wish to make the switch in the legislated flavors of menthol, mint, and tobacco. A specialist vape shop needs to be solely a vape shop where people who smoke can get advice guidance and support during their switching journey. Something that will never happen in a dairy. As you can see, nothing is ever guaranteed. We will keep you informed as to what is going on and hopefully the outcome will be the one that serves the needs of the people of New Zealand. Thank you again.